In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. Today it is Wednesday, the 30th day of March in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. Today we are on day 24 in our 25 days novena for candidates and school going children. Tomorrow it is the 25th day and then on first, on first we shall have the closure mass and as I said because it's good that I prepare you early in advance our day starts at 3 p.m. with adoration to the Holy Eucharist and then we take a short break before 8 p.m. when we shall have mass. This week we are looking about a judgmental attitude. And when we talk about judgmental attitude, we did start, I think, on Monday, uh, why it is not good to judge others. And for we not to, we were able to look at a few things, what we need not to do. And what we need not to do, as, as per the last uh, devotion, we talked about depersonalizing. Somebody can say something, and you would want to customize it to make it personal, and you feel bad. Even when the person did not mean to hurt us. Remember I have I said in the past that... Uh, Misery is a choice that we make. Sometimes, if not always, we make a choice to be miserable. Whoever said something, they may be saying with a good spirit, but then we are taking it from our own perspective. The other area, we are reminded to look for basic goodness. You know, we do a lot of Scanning, scanning for the negative. But it is always good if we can, and I know we can, be able to scan for basic goodness. We have said in the past that there is no human being who is fundamentally evil. Each one of us has some basic goodness that may not have been explored or identified. I remember when I was taking you through forgiveness, we did say that the primary stage in forgiveness is first to find out something good about the aggressor. Something good that the aggressor has ever said or done to us. You get it? So when we find about the something good that the aggressor has done to us, then from there we can make a decision that yes, this person has done this and this to me. But I know, angry as I am, frustrated as I am, disappointed as I am, this person has this goodness. The moment we start with something good or something positive that we know about the aggressor, whether, whether done to us or done to, uh, to another person, then it mitigates the pain that we are going through. When somebody has done something bad to us, as I said the other day, it would only be human and natural to see that this person is very bad. They have done this or this or the other one. <clears throat> but then there is something that needs to be observed. Every person who has ever hurt you has some basic goodness that you may have overlooked. How about if all were to start about something good? Every time I meet a couple who have grievances against each other, accusations, counter-accusations, 
there is a need here, I always ask them, tell me something good about your husband. Because it is not true that your husband can have nothing good, uh, good about him. Tell me something good about your wife. Sometimes the couples struggle to find something good about the other person. Well, that is not good. So if, if you're struggling to find something good about your husband or your wife, then it means that uh, you may be so bad or so destroyed or broken if you like. So always look for some basic goodness about that person. After that, repeat the mantra, just like me. The mantra, just like me. The person who has hurt you, has hurt you just as you may have hurt another person. The person who may have caused you pain, may have caused you pain just as you may have caused pain to another person. You know, that reminds you and I that at some point we may have failed somebody. And maybe the person we failed never judged us. But here we are playing holier than thou, demonizing everyone and saying, how bad my brother is. How bad my sister is. Forgetting that as I complain about what they have done to me, about what he has done to me, about what she has done to me, there could be somebody somewhere who is also complaining about what I have done to them. If only you can have that headset, uh, headset to know that uh, I may have done that bad something to, to you. Oh, but I also remember that I have been able to aggress on someone else. Just like me. The other one is something we call reframing. Reframing. When someone does something you don't like, perhaps think of it as they are simply solving a problem in a different way than you would, you know. Or maybe they have a different timetable than you do. This may help you to be more open-minded and accepting their behavior. There is a Dalai Lama who says, people take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they are not on your road doesn't mean they have gotten lost. End of the quote. Listen to this. People take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they are not on your road doesn't mean they have gotten lost. End of the quote. That is what we call reframing. I would want to put it in a different language, maybe for you to understand. Uh, borrowing uh, the, the, the bliders that the person is using and then trying to look at the situation from your perspective. From where, I mean, from where they are standing. Because the person who has wronged you may be doing something different. Maybe that is how they seek for fulfillment. Because, as we also say, also say, in our socialization, we were socialized differently. The values we were taught are completely different. Sometimes you may want to say, how comes that this person does not understand the sense of justice? My brother, my sister, the person in question was not brought up the way you were brought up. The values you were taught that person may not have been taught the same values. So we can't all be just. However, we should all be just. We can't all be truthful. However much you would want that everyone to be truthful. We can't all be fair. We can't all be this or the other one. We cannot fit in the same frame. The moment we understand that, we will know that this person is not only unique, 
but is socialized differently than I. And I have seen this in the past. Think of somebody who has never has, what has eh? but who has never had a living dad in his life. Think of somebody who has never had a living mother in his life or her life. If you are to bring these people together with somebody who has had a loving dad and a loving mother, their behaviors are different. Fundamentally, they are all human beings. Principality. I mean, primarily. All human beings, all men, all women, but one grew without seeing a dad. So this person may never have been paternally mentored. Another one may never have been maternally mentored. Another one has enjoyed both. At some point, their behaviors may be different. Very, very different. The moment you know that, then you will understand. He may have done that because of one, two, three. She may have done that because of one, two, three. And finally, on this, look at your own behavior. We talk of uh, the charge sheet. Think of this as the charge sheet. You are accusing so and so of infringing on this and this and this and you have a four page charge sheet. This charge sheet, this is written the accusation you have about the other person. Look at the behavior of this person. What they did to make you feel broken and frustrated. And think of yourself. If you were on the same, would you have been better than they are? Many a times, you would have been worse. Worse. Kabisa, worse. That is my point. That is my point. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will pick it up tomorrow morning. Thank you. Let's keep on concluding the novena. I am thanking God and I can't wait for Friday, the day that we will be able to go through the conclusion.